I've been waiting for this game for a while and now that I finally finished it, I'm really surprised. In a good way and in a bad way. Gestalt's Demon Cinder is a mix of a Metrovania and an RPG set in a gritty steampunk world. So there's a lot of story and other RPG elements like leveling up and spending skill points, but also a typical Metrovania progression with unlockable abilities. The latter provides a solid foundation for progress and fun abilities for traversal. You get a double jump, an air dash, nothing too fancy, but decent enough to awaken your sense for exploration and finding secrets. Sadly though, there isn't much to discover. That's because it's always obvious where to go. Very rarely you encounter invisible paths or places that are hard to reach. Instead, the amount of blocked paths that require a new ability to get past them is surprisingly small. That doesn't have to be a bad thing though, as some could see that as an approachable way for exploring and a nice change in the typical Metrovania formula. Still, I couldn't help myself but feel a bit let down by the oversimplistic exploration. That's also because there actually isn't that much stuff to find. Most of the time you're rewarded with consumable items that don't really feel that useful. But of course, there are some rewarding things to find, like items to increase the number of your healing potions or skill points. These are also earned through level ups and used in a skill tree that may be simple, but offers some great skills for combat, like a flaming spinning attack or a greater bullet capacity. With every new major ability you get during the story, you unlock another starting point in the skill tree. That way you get plenty of options and paths to go and increase the stats of your character. Of course these stats and your level are relevant for combat, which is one of the things that surprised me. Because unlike the trend of making games harder, Gestalt's Demon Cinder is a shockingly easy game. During my roughly 10 hour playthrough I only died 5 times, 3 of which was in a battle with the end boss. Again, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, but what comes with it are bosses with overly simplistic combat mechanics that are so incredibly easy to decipher and dodge, it's almost ridiculous. So even though I like games to be easy, boss fights are a bit disappointing because even I need some kind of challenge to get a sense of achievement, but sadly combat doesn't provide that at all. The story on the other hand is decent. It doesn't tell you anything you haven't already seen a bunch of times before and it's incredibly predictable. Like you honestly kinda know what happens at the end in the first two or three hours, I swear. The only thing about the story I found to be a bit underwhelming is the storytelling itself. There just are many things happening. Most of the time it's just you watching characters talk. But also, the story isn't bad by any means. There is an undeniable tension and some nice character dynamics that are definitely worth watching. And there's a lot to watch. That's another thing that surprised me. I think a lot of people expect the Gestalt Steam and Cinder to be a Metrovania with RPG elements, but it's actually the other way around. The amount of time you spend in dialogue is way higher than I imagined. The dialogue itself ranges from cleverly written to moments where I laughed out loud because damn, nobody talks like that. While this story is worth paying attention to, I wish that for a game that takes a heavy focus on that aspect, it would have been a bit more engaging and most importantly, longer. Like I mentioned previously, I finished this game in around 10 hours. I didn't do all the side quests, but I did a lot of exploration and unlocked around 93% of the map. So just be aware of that going into the game. I personally like shorter games, but for some, this might be a deal breaker. In the beginning I said that Gestalt's Demon Cinder surprised me in a good way and in a bad way. Bad because exploration left much to be desired combat is way too easy and the story could have been a bit more engaging. But I was positively surprised because nothing is actually bad, like everything is still fun and even after a long gaming session, I didn't want to put down the controller. Gestalt's Demon Cinder doesn't reinvent the wheel and there isn't anything special about the individual aspects of it, and I don't mean this in a bad way. But what it does, it does well enough to be a game I would recommend to fans of Metrovanias and RPGs alike. Thanks so much for watching, hit subscribe if you found this review to be helpful and tell me in the comments if you already played Gestalt Steam and Cinder and how you liked it. Alright, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.